So hello, welcome back if you do watch my videos. So I'm doing the intro at the end, but for the day I'm just doing an in-depth glowy full coverage, not cakey. What else? Did I say glowy? It's really glowy, so I'll say it twice. Kinda makeup tutorial. I did do my eyes and lips off camera, so I just focused on the base. So I'm gonna keep the intro short, but if you do wanna see how I got this base, just keep on watching. So I started off with my eyebrows done because it's not relevant. I really don't like them today. Oh my god, that worked. Anyway, so I'm pure breaking out. Don't even look at my skin. But whenever I break out, I make sure to put moisturiser before my foundation. I don't go on with pure heavy skincare before because I feel like it's too many layers. So I just put moisturiser on. This here is just the... It's just like a vitamin E with primrose. It's from Boots by the way. Obviously, any moisturizer is grand. Any products are grand if you are following. Oh, you're not like, it's just so you're all glowy. It just makes sure that if you have any wee cuts, because all my spots are now cuts because I've my spots, that like the foundation doesn't cling or nothing. So for foundation, this is obviously so obvious, but make sure you get a foundation that suits your skin type. Another obvious one, if you want glowy skin, don't get a matte foundation. What's a really good idea as well is mixing foundation. So I use the Milani, I don't know what they use. The Milani like Conceal and Perfect. It's actually my favourite foundation. I feel like it gives you such a good coverage. And it's not matte, but it's not G, so it's like in between. So to make it more glowy, I mix in the Ordinary Foundation. This here's only like £4 or 3 something really crazy. But this here, like... I feel like it's really oily, it's really like liquidy on your hand, this here is really thick on your hand. So mixing them just gives you like a more glowy look and it's my favourite combo ever. So if I do have spots, I always conceal before. This just helps it to blend in with your foundation so that you can't see just like lighter spots all around your foundation to get me. So I'm using like a really full coverage concealer, this here is the Jouer, Jouer, that one anyway. It is really full coverage so and because you want full coverage i always blend it on with my finger just so no products lifted with like a brush or a beauty blender it just helps to keep the maximum coverage so i'm just applying my foundation with a brush i don't really know if there's a massive difference between a beauty blender and a brush i just think it's handier and easier to apply so you can use a beauty blender if you want it's just like easier to mix as well in your hand but i'm thinking showing what brushes are good to use I feel like brushes are like essential if you want your makeup to turn out good because I feel like if you have bad brushes then the product won't go on as nice. So it's really glowy. It is the ordinary foundation I think. If you can hear anything in the background, it's my dog snoring. So if you do your eyebrows before and you don't know how to get around them, I just use this here with taper brush. You can't really see but you know what I mean. I just get some foundation and I carve them out but I don't want to make it look curved out so I carve it out and then I kind of flick through the hairs just at the edge so that it looks still fluffy and if it still looks too curved you can just go back in with your pencil and just flick some hairs so I feel like a mistake a lot of people do is instead of using foundation to carve out their eyebrows they use concealer which is usually lighter than their foundation so when they do that air you can just see just a lighter shade just above their foundation and it just makes it look less seamless so I recommend using your actual foundation. You don't really need a lot of coverage right above your eyebrow anyway. So there's no need for concealer. So you can just use foundation. So with my foundation, I bring it like underneath my eye. Just so we can use less concealer. So I'm literally taking a wet and wild concealer. And then I'm just applying it right under my eye. I'm not doing my dear on them triangles. But then I bring it up the sides of the nose. Just to kind of give you a contour. Everyone's different. But I like using a concealer only like one or two shades like lighter than my foundation it's kind of just a personal preference but i just like it better that way instead i like really highlighted and then i just put a wee bit on my chin and then a wee bit on my cupid's bow just to like tie the two sides together so it's not just like lighter and then it looks like you have a mustache or something and then i don't put any on my forehead because i don't feel like we need extra coverage anyway well like if you do then you can if you want but i feel like it's unnecessary and i don't like it bright anyway because with the bronzer and stuff it'll look lighter anyway but it just makes it less cakey because there's less product on and i feel like between my eyebrows and all it cakes anyway so there's no point putting it there and then again i just blend it out with my foundation brush 
I feel like you can use a beauty blender for this step as well. So I feel like powder is such a crucial step in this. Like obviously I want to set it all in place but I don't want to be matte. I really do think the type of brush you use is so important. So I use the Airspawn powder but I feel like the RCMA is a good cheap alternative. I think this here is still cheap. It is American but I think you can get it on Amazon now. So I'm a firm believer that if you're not oily, don't apply your powder with a beauty blender. I think that's what used to make my makeup so bad. It wasn't so bad, but like it kind of ruined it and it could look better. And I really think that is like skin type selective. If it works for me, do it. So I always go on about this brush, but it's just an e.l.f. powder brush. You could use a big massive brush like this, but with the way I do my base, this ain't the right type of brush. So whenever I do my powder, I just apply it in the inside of my face, not my perimeter. So everywhere I'm not applying bronzer. So I just do my chin and then I do my cupid's bow as well. Do it right under my eyes. And then I only do the center of my forehead. So this way we've set our makeup, but it still looks glowy and we're not pure matte. So I feel like we, a beauty blender, it packs on too much product and it just like clings to your foundation instead of like sitting on top and blending under yellow. It just makes your face like really just dead if there's too much on because I feel like highlighter won't do enough to bring back all the glow. And I always noticed whenever I was using the RCMA powder, I feel like this is why I don't like it now as much. But whenever I would apply powder with a beauty blender, it would really lighten my foundation. It would just like make it so much lighter. I feel like I'm pure talking loads, but why I don't use this here type of brush is because I don't want my whole face to be matte. I only want certain areas to be set down. So I feel like if you use this here type of brush, it'll pick up too much product and it's just too big to get in the spots that I want. You know what I mean? So it'll end up like getting it all here and I don't want that. But whenever I do like using this brush is for the next step. So this step helps they set the rest of her face and also add a bit of color. So we are gonna use bronzer obviously as well, but I feel like it gives like a nice gradient between like the lightness underneath our eyes and then, then our bronzer. So it's just kind of a muddle shade, just they tie it all together. So I'm going in with this here Be Hitch powder. So it's kind of like maybe a half a shade darker than my foundation. So with all my powders, like my bronzer and my blush and stuff like that, I like to use like tap emotions because I feel like it doesn't disturb the foundation underneath. I just go where I contour and then just kind of blend it out. It's just adding a wee bit of light bronzer but also setting where that is and then we still have the glow. And then I also go around my forehead. So then now is whenever I go in with bronzer. By the way, I'll link the products down below. I'm not really mentioning shades or like full names and stuff. I do use the same products in literally every video, so you might know already, but. So instead of pure diffusing the color out like we did with the first shade, I'm just keeping it more precise, but still blend it out, but just not bringing it up here in this region. And again, I'm using tap emotions. So to make sure they're both blended together, I'll just go in with that Be Hitch powder again, and then just go in between the two make sure they're blended and we're also still glowy i'm going to keep going on about we're still glowy because that's the way i love my makeup you're glowy and g and that's like the point of the video as well so next is blush and highlight you know the crack already my two revolution palettes so i'm going on with a hot spice palette and i don't like too much of a pink blush because i like to stay nice and warm so i just use the pure peachy shade and also that shade has like not glitter but like a shimmer about it as well. Again, I'm just using a tap emotion and just blending it all around my cheek. And then again, I'll go in with that air bag brush and make sure it's all blended. So next, I'm moving on to highlight. And I feel like I've got a nice routine where the highlighter just looks like glass and not just like a line of highlighter. I feel like I used to do that when I was younger. And it's all about the type of brushes you use. I swear it's a game changer. Also, I want to do a video of, because I've seen Soph do it, and she done how I done my makeup versus now, so she done like half and half. I feel like that's such a good video idea. It can kind of be like a, a do's and don'ts as well. So this is the e.l.f. highlighting brush. e.l.f. do really good brushes, you know, and they're really cheap. So it's kind of a big brush like look. 
it's kind of big like and this is good at like not layering on product but making it nice and seamless speaking about soap as well i'm using her palette so i just go on with like these two shades and then just like dust it on I like putting it on my forehead as well and then my chin, kind of everywhere. So then I like to go on with a more detailed brush. Here I like to go on with a setting spray just so the highlighter we're going to put on now it's the same one but like it's just going to be more blind. So this is just an elf one. I do have Urban Decay but this one's fine like and it's a really good mask. So I just apply the So then I go in with the same shades but using this brush now whenever it's kind of dry. Do you see it? Hopefully you see it. So then after you can apply more setting spray. The Urban Decay is really good for long lasting. So I think this is the base done. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back. I tried to do the TikTok trend. They make your loves bigger, but I don't know, I just think it looks weird. But I hope you enjoyed. It was more of a like in-depth tutorial kind of thing. And not like a chatty get ready with me kind of vibe. But anyways, please subscribe if you're not already. Because I would really appreciate it. Bye!